Welcome. I'm Leslie Cannon. I'm Mary Gavoni. I'm Linda Harvey. I'm Olivia Wan, and together we are the Compliance Divas. Welcome to the Compliance Divas podcast. My name is Mary Gavoni, and I will be the moderator for this episode, which is an interview with Michelle Lee, who is the Executive Director of OSAP. We bring clarity and simplicity to compliance by navigating the regulatory environment to keep you on course. You can subscribe to the Compliance Divas podcast through your favorite podcast channel or on our website, thecompliancedivas.com. Any resources that we mention during this episode will be found on the compliancedivas.com website. And if you have any questions about the podcast, you can email us at support at the compliancedivas.com. So Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so thrilled to have you. Um, as we were just conversing before we started the podcast today, we talk about OSAP all the time in our podcasts, but there may be some listeners who maybe just don't know what OSAP is and how wonderful OSAP is. So that's what we want to accomplish today. So Michelle, give us a little bit of information about you and how you came to OSAP and in your experience in dentistry. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you um, again for um, having me and, and thanks for all you do to, to share OSAP's message. Um, so um, yeah, I've been in dentistry um, my entire career. <laughs> and a lot of people don't realize that I started out um, right out of college um, I was hired to be a recruiter for a dental staffing company based in Atlanta called DDS Staffing Resources, and um, it was started by a dental hygienist, and I was the first person ever hired by the staffing company to work within the company that had no dental experience. And so in those, I was a big risk. So in those first few weeks, I actually went to evening dental assisting classes so I could learn terminology. I even learned how to make a temporary crown. Of course, I never actually did any of that, but it was the basis. And, um, and then through the years, through all the trade shows we participated in, I sat through so many continuing education classes and really fell in love with the dental industry. We went on to start a medical staffing division as well as dental, but dental was always where my heart was. And um, I eventually bought the company from the founder. And um, that's what I did for 29 years. And I finally made the decision to um, walk away from staffing. Um, I, I sold the company, merged it in with a larger company and uh, stayed on for a little while with that. But then I, I walked away and for about a year, I was a practice management consulting consultant working with um, a couple of boutique uh, dental uh, consulting firms doing leadership training and team development and got a phone call one day about this opportunity. And um, I'm going to tell you, it was not something I was looking for, but it's the best second act I could have ever had. And you are having a fabulous second act. Something that just occurred to me as you were talking about the organization is we probably ought to tell our listeners what OSAP stands for. <laughs> yes. And that is, we all take it for granted because we're all longtime members. It stands for Organization for Safety, Asepsis, and Prevention. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Linda, who has another question for you, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. We are so thrilled to have you on our podcast today. We all have known and loved you since you've stepped into this role. And it's so especially meaningful for us to have you. And it is here at the holidays. So it's such a joyful time in general. So as we just mentioned, Mary talked about what does OSEP stand for? But would you mind giving us a brief history of your organization and telling us a little bit more about OSAP? Because we may have listeners that are new to dentistry and aren't as familiar with this fabulous organization. Well, certainly. Um, so OSAP has been around for 37, I think we're going on 38 years um, this coming year. And it was started um, 
uh, by a group of people who saw a need for an association to focus on infection control. And that was, that was in the eighties with the onset of HIV and AIDS and which was the first time I think, um, dentistry infection control processes in dentistry changed. And um, I remember those discussions and trying to convince dental professionals they needed to wear gloves. <laughs> I mean, that was like a, that was huge. Even with the, in temporary staffing at that time, I had dentists call and say, are you going to provide the gloves? I'm not going to provide all the gloves, right? And who would even think, have a second thought about that today? Um, so we are um, a, the only dental membership association that has as its sole focus infection prevention education. So all of the other national associations, ADA, ADHA, ADAA, all the specialty ones, in all of their large events, trade shows, they're going to have um, sessions on infection prevention, right? And all, all four of you speak at those meetings. And, um, but OSAP is the only one that that's all we focus on is infection prevention. And um, the association has grown over the years, but you know, when I came on board, I, I'd known about OSAP since the early nineties myself, we, we would do um, uh, OSHA blood board pathogen uh, training sessions for clients. And, and that's when I first learned about OSAP and because a friend of all of yours uh, would actually do those sessions for my clients and she was a member of OSAP. So that was my first introduction. Um, but when I came on board, what I realized that OSAP was dentistry's best kept secret. And so my, my mission for the past three and a half years is what can we do to, to make it a household name in every dental practice across the country? And we all know, I, th I think the pandemic helped with that just a bit. <laughs> People became more um, aware of OSAP um, during the past year and a half, certainly. Um, they were all... Dental professionals were trying to find um, a resource to help them navigate these challenging times. And OSAP came through for a lot of people. OSAP always comes through for a lot of people, um, as we all know, um, especially in disseminating accurate information and not some of the craziness that we all heard out there in, in some programs. So Olivia, you had a question about how members can benefit from OSAP. Hi, Michelle. You're, Hi. you're doing such a great job. We appreciate you taking time with us. But yeah, I would like you to speak to our listeners on how OSAP membership can benefit them. Mm, yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, during my short stint for that year, going into dental offices um, uh, as a practice management consultant and, and doing team development training, we would talk during my time in those offices, we would talk about, you know, ways to retain patients, ways to generate uh, new patient referrals. And one of the things that we, we would do is we would talk about giving a, a, a tour of your dental practice. And I would have dental team members give me that tour. And back then I noticed when we would go through the office, they would point out you know, their sterilization area and say, oh, well, that's where we, you know, sterilize all the instruments and they would just breeze right by. And I remember stopping at that point, this is my pre OSAP days and saying, whoa, 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 we need to talk about this. Patients want to know what you're doing to keep them safe. And when I came on board at OSAP, I realized all the resources that were that we have for these practices to do just that everything from scripts on how to talk about what they're doing to keep patients safe um 
there's scripts about vaccines and why they, why they are important. Um, of course, you know, it, it was about the flu vaccine. Now we've got COVID, right, um, that we've added to this. And but the other resources that we have, um, especially now, um, during the pandemic, we were very fortunate um, to receive a grant from uh, DentaQuest, which is now CareQuest, um, to develop a best practices checklist for dental practices to take all of that CDC guidance, OSHA regulations, um, the toolkits from the ADA, from the ADHA, and put it into a, a checklist that basically operationalized all of that to make it easier for um, dental team members to implement into their offices. And, and that was made available for free for every dental professional in the country. And it sits on our website. So you don't have to be a member of OSAP to, to, to benefit from that. But, and it's still out there and we continue to update it. Um, and initially it was about reopening your practice. And now it's just about the day-to-day -day in the practice and, and taking all of that interim guidance and, and making sure you're doing everything correct. So we have those resources. Um, we have resources for the infection control coordinator. We even have a job description on the website for the infection control coordinator. Um, all of those, there, there's so many benefits and, and resources that we have just on the website. And the other thing I think that is the best kept secret about OSAP is how affordable membership is. I, for a average size dental practice, it is $150 a year for up to 10 team members to have their own login and password to the site. $150. You can spend that on a staff lunch, right? I mean, we're not talking big bucks here. And with that, you receive um, uh, six times a year our, our ICIP, which is Infection Control and Practice Educational Newsletter. And when you complete, there's an assessment at the end of that newsletter. And when you complete that, members get one hour of CE um, credit at no charge. So you multiply that out, 10 team members times six credits, that's 60 hours of CE included in that $150 a year, right? So I mean, right there, that just pays for itself. The other resources um, we have um, every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern, our Info Bytes comes out in an email format to every member, and that gives all the latest um the top three, I should say, updates that had to do with infection control the week before. So that way everybody can stay on, on top of ever-changing information and, and not miss the beat. Wow, thank you, Michelle. Some of my favorites over the years have been from policy to practice workbook. <laughs> I call it the infection control Bible. Yes. And also, I love the If Saliva Were Red video that OSEP had redone. Still, I just, you know, even though it's a little dated, it's just such wonderful information that OSEP. Well, and I have together. great news on that. So we are in the process of, um, we're in the very beginning stages of um, redoing that video. So we should have an update in 22. Um, and um, yeah, very excited about that. Um, we, um, fingers crossed all of the grant money will come through. And so hopefully when all of that happens, I want to come back on the podcast to, to share it. Um, but we're working to try to make that available for everybody. It'll be a digital version now, um, not on a DVD anymore. <laughs> and, but yes, and we want to add in, it's not going to be just if saliva is red, but if saliva and aerosols were red. Wow. That's awesome, Michelle. Thank you. Oh, Mary, back to you. You just made all the divas <laughs> <Yeah>. very happy <laughs> uh, with that news. That is fabulous. But the membership benefits that you and Olivia just chatted about are not the only things that um, OSAP does. So Leslie, I think you had a question about events that OSAP um, provides for us. 
That's right, Mary. And I wanted to ask Michelle about the events that take place uh, both for the onboarding of a new infection control coordinator and then uh, what's available for people who are rather seasoned in infection control. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So every year um, in January, we host our annual OSAP Dental Infection Control Boot Camp, which is a three-day, very intensive foundational training um, on infection control. And yes, that is the ideal opportunity for new infection control coordinators and people who just want to, to get updated on any, you know, changes. And we all know to be our best, even seasoned professionals have to go back to the fundamentals from time to time, just to make sure that we're not missing a step. Right. And so that's what happens at boot camp. Um, the, we have, uh, leading speakers from across the country. Many are from directly from the CDC, um, talking about all of the guidelines. Um, and of course this year it, it continues to to be updated with um, any of the interim guidance while we're still um, in this pandemic. And um, that will be in Atlanta um, this year live, um, January uh, 23rd through the 26th. Um, so registration is open for that. We are also recording the entire event. So if someone can't travel, because a lot of people still have travel restrictions, um, they can also register for the on-demand recordings, and those will be available a couple of weeks after the actual event occurs and will be available for 60 days. And so that gives people time to, um, you know, work on it on their own um, during the evenings, the weekends, that type of thing, and take their time to go through the 22 hours of education. And then we have in June, um, our annual conference, which does focus on all the emerging issues um, that are happening within infection control. And it's just such a great celebration. And we'll be back together in person this year in Minneapolis, which is the greatest time to be in Minneapolis is June. <laughs> not January. So we'll be there in, in, um, in June for that event. And of course, membership, anyone can attend, but if you are a member, you do get a discounted rate to attend these sessions. Michelle, that's fabulous information. And so to kind of recap what I've heard so far, it's not only the in-person and the on-demand access to this great information, but I just have to chime in that, well, uh, the sole focus of uh, OSAP is infection prevention. I know that there are a lot of other resources within the information that's provided, not only live and on demand, but through the website and through the info bytes on OSHA compliance. And that's yes. always something that people ask me about. It seems like it's a big mystery of you know what it is OSHA really expects from us in dentistry. And also communication skills, as you mentioned, so that team members uh, can communicate with patients about their infection prevention and control programs. And I have to say that one of the my favorite things about um, OSAP, when I was first becoming um, an infection prevention and control consultant, I had questions and I needed reliable responses. I needed to go back and have cite the reference or cite the resource. And another membership benefit is the frequently asked questions. Most of the time, the questions that I have had already been asked. So there's a great resource and it makes me look really smart when I can provide the right answer with the accurate reference to it. So thanks so much for providing that information. Well, and also if, if the answer, if there's not an answer to your question, you simply submit it to ask OSAP. And we, we usually say that we'll have an answer to you within three business days, but I can tell you, we have a full-time dentist on staff um, subject matter expert. And most of the time she gets an answer to you within a day. Um, so it's, it's good. And, and it's a great resource for our members. Thank you so much for that information. Linda. Michelle, there's so many, I would say countless benefits and resources that we've talked about in this short time together. And I just want to comment about the fact that so many 
of our professional team members and dentists were also confused and you know, like everybody was going through this crisis the past two years. And so just to reiterate that OSAP is there to help everyone to sort through the confusion in any different way that they're able to take advantage of it, whether it's coming back in person to a meeting, attending virtually, learn at your own pace, uh, the weekly newsletters, just there's such a wealth of information that ever, anybody can just dive in and take it bit by bit to help themselves feel like they're staying current because nothing is the same as it was two years ago and it will never be the same as it was two years ago. And I think that if we're relying on the way we did it in school, the way we did it from our last course, or the way we've read about it, you know, we just always want to fact check and be sure that it's accurate. And I, we could go to OSAP with, you know, 150%, you know, confidence that you are there for us and your team. So thank you very much, Michelle. Well, thank you. We do have, we have so many people who are so committed to this organization. That's what makes it work. Um, people like you all who are passionate about getting the right information out. And, you know, and I would be remiss if I, I didn't bring up one of the things that happened in the past, um, this past year is um, it was in our strategic plan that we were going to launch a new website and new learning management system. But that was scheduled to happen at uh, the end of 22 or the beginning of 23. And when COVID hit, and after those first many months of we were going through all of this, we stopped and I had a discussion with our board and said, we can't wait on this website. People need it now. We, we need to be able to make this happen. And I, I got to give it to the team. Everybody pulled together and we were able to launch this um, in August um, this year of 21. So we, the re the website was already amazing with so many resources, but it was revamped to make it more user-friendly and it's connected to this great digital educational platform. And there are so many, there are webinars on there that people can, you know, um, listen to All, the past three years of ICIPs. Um, are also on there. All of that right now is free education for our members. So there's some, some great, great information. And we just need to get that message out there. If you haven't checked out the website in a while, go back, take a look at it because it's pretty impressive. And the website address is www osap osap.org org so we will put that in the resources um a link to osap but for listeners who want to go as soon as they are done listening to this podcast run to the website that's great olivia did you have another comment for us i just wanted to mention michelle this is actually my 20th year as a member of osap and i remember starting my business in the year 2000 and it wasn't until a year later that I stumbled on OSAP. Mm -hmm. And I just want to mention for our listeners that, you know, we always get emails. Hey, I'd like to be in a consultant like you. I would like to do what you do. And one of the things that the divas encourages those who are interested in consulting is to become a member of OSAP and to take advantage of all this knowledge that has been put together. So thank you, Michelle. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. I would venture to say that we all, all the divas that is, may not have actually connected and become infection prevention friends had it not been for OSAP. I joined OSAP in 1992. So I think I'm coming up on 30 years of membership in, wow. in OSAP. And it, it is one of the best organizations I've ever, ever belonged to. And Leslie, you had a comment as well before we wrap up. Yes, I just wanted to um, say how pleased I am that OSAP has um, a way for someone to have a credential or designate themselves as being effective in infection control and prevention. Michelle, can you just tell us a little bit about that credential? Yes. So um, 
You know, there's there's actually um, two um, two new programs that have come out. Um, we've been working on them for about um, six years, so it, it was well underway before I started with OSAP. And I'm just amazed at at how much it takes for this to be developed. Um, the first thing is the um, Dental Infection Control Certificate Program, which is a three step process all online. We partnered with the Dell Foundation to create that. And that's one of the pathways to earning your certification. And so um, the um, in early 22, we will be launching, we've actually, um, we've just done the pre-test portion of this. So there several people will uh, find out actually in the before the year end if they are have earned a CDIPC certified in dental infection prevention and control um, uh, letters to put after their name they'll know by the end of the year because a lot of people um, were able to to join into that pre-test event and then we'll roll out the full event um, early 22. So we're very excited about that. It is the only certification that exists for dental infection prevention. Um, so there's nothing else like it. There's a second certification actually that's for our um the, the CDIPC, I should say, is mostly for clinical professionals. The, the DIS IPC, hope I got that right, um, all these acronyms, um, is for the dental trade industry and or um, dental office managers and dental front office individuals who may not have the clinical background. And so that's rolling out uh, late spring of 22. So, um, but yes, we, we've been working on this for, like I said, about six years with our partners at Danby and the Dell Foundation. And um, it's here. It's very exciting. That does sound exciting, Michelle. Thank you so much. It's all very exciting. I, there's nothing that's not exciting about OSEP in, in my humble opinion. So thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us today and filling us in and, and helping our listeners understand um, what a valuable resource that OSAP is. And we really, really encourage anyone who is not already a member to go to OSAP.org and explore that membership and and take advantage of all the wonderful educational opportunities that are available even if you're not a member certainly yes. resources so we want to wish all of our listeners happy holidays and we hope that you have enjoyed our podcast today remember that if you have questions you can submit them to support at the compliance and we will have resources that we've talked about on this podcast on our website, thecompliancedivas.com. So thank you again, Michelle, and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you all.